1977, he borrowed $40,000 and set up shop in his garage. He had equipment in there and he started producing uh, corrosion control products <coughs> and eventually expanded out of that production facility to a, a larger facility in St. Paul. That eventually became too small for him, so he started to look out for a, a, a larger location. And that's when he started looking around in White Bear Township. And that was in the late 80s. In 1988, he did a search in White Bear Township. And the township followed up with him with a proposal to develop a six-acre site in the southern part of the township on White Bear Parkway. In, in mid-1988, his company and the township began formal negotiations to permit and, uh, a facility and build the facility at that location. After he got his approvals and uh, the development agreements that were executed, construction began at the site in 1991. He's been there ever since. There's been a number of expansions to the point where he has that six acre site completely filled. In addition to that, he has business sites, production sites, around the world. He's an international corporation. He has sites and uh, production facilities in Minnesota and Wisconsin, Canada, and other locations. The corporate headquarters remain located in White Bear Township. And from his $40,000 loan in St. Paul, he's expanded that business to an international presence. And in 2011, he generated worldwide revenues in excess of $100 million. Personally, even though he is very active in the community and he's proud to be active in the community and we're glad to see it, uh, he became active in politics back in his home country. And in 2005, he was elected to the Zagreb City Council where he spent a four-year term. He's also promoted his country uh, here, and he established a Croatian consulate in White Bear Township. And I don't know how many people are aware of that, but we have had that international presence in the township for a number of years. I understand recently that the consulate has been relocated, but he still maintains a, a, a Croatian cultural center at, at, the, at that location. So I've just touched on a few things. There's a lot more to his story, and, and uh, uh, you can find it in a book that he found time to author over the years. I understand there's copies here, and I'm sure he'll tell us about it, but uh, it's a book called The American Dream, A Guy from Croatia. So with that, uh, I would like to take a break here and ask Boris, to, Boris Mixic of Corp Cortec Corporation to come forward. And on behalf of White Bear Township, uh, we'd like to uh, present Boris with a token recognizing his, <laughs> recognizing, why did you break it? <laughs> recognizing his service and his location to White Bear Township. Uh, it is noted that, that Porta Corporation was the first economic development project that was constructed in White Bear Township. With that, I'll turn the table over to uh, Boris. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I'd, I'd like to thank you all for attending this little speech I'm going to do for you and uh, share some, some things on, on the long path, which I would, uh, I would call the path to success, if there is such a thing. So uh, the title of my, my speech is uh, Nuts and Balls, How to Build a Global Corporation. And uh, one of the most important things is to have fun doing it. <laughs> and uh, as I get, as, uh, uh, as I said in the past, uh, you know, leaving the Iron Curtain country in the early 70s was a, a one-way street. <laughs> Once you left, there was no way back because they take your documents, and uh, if you do go back to see your family, they lock you up. So, you know, it was in those days when we immigrated to the United States, it was totally different. Uh, 
at that time and even now it's somewhat of a melting point, but then it was truly a melting point uh, that I remember in the early 70s. And uh, you know, these immigrants that came to this country, they did one thing, they left all their problems behind. You know, when you leave uh, your country with you know, $30 in your pocket, you don't have too many options. I mean, you know, the only option you have is to f find your way in life. So uh, here is the thing. We are in a corrosion protection or rust protection business. There are three things inevitable in life. Death, taxes, and corrosion. Thank God we are, thank God we are in the right business. So you can see a, a very good example of corrosion. That we, we took this picture of my wife, Ines, who is here with us down in Key West, one of our favorite places to go. Well, how do we succeed? What are the elements of success? Creativity, vision, innovation, inspiration, a goal, the training, many different things. And every, every entrepreneur will have a different choice of these. But this is what I was able to come up with. But there is one that kept me going, and that's perseverance. And I wrote a book about it. So I'm going to share it with you. You can take your own copy, and I'll sign it for you. But great works are performed not by strength, but by perseverance. And that's what happened, kept me going for all these years in business. It will be 40, 40 years next year that I've been doing this. As the great mind said, Albert Einstein, he said, said, if you want to live a happy life, tie it to a goal, not to people or things. <laughs> Pretty clever thought, I, I want to share with you. This, is, this was my first factory, this little garage in Hugo, Minnesota. That's where I started. You know, the, one good thing about having a factory in the garage, this is probably the best place to start because since there is no heating, it makes you work harder. At, uh, <laughs> <the engine. laughs> and some of the greatest companies in the world were started in the garage. Actually, Cadillac was running an ad on, on national television saying that's, that's where they started as well. So nothing wrong with that. And that's where we are today. The world's largest corrosion and hybrid sites, uh, site located in White Bear Township. And I want to thank the township for all the help you've given us. That's really important. And uh, as a part of our expansion, I always say what one of the guiding thoughts is think locally act globally and that was the point because the local market for our product and our technology wasn't big enough to support our expansion so we very er early on started doing the export and international business and these plans that we have now five in US three in Europe and one in Canada is an example of vertical integration this is our technology campus in White Bear Township. That's the, that's the heart of our whole system. And one thing I must say that with this investment in White Bear Township, one thing that I'm personally happy for, that we have never taken a single dollar of outside investment. Haven't sold the share of stock or anything. Everything was done through organic growth by, by you know, growing your market share. And uh, another largest plant in the world is uh, in, located in Cambridge, Minnesota. That's our plastics uh, extrusion plant and conversion plant, which is uh, employing a lot of people over there as well. Another plant we have is uh, in Spooner, Wisconsin, which is uh, in, a, in a business of aerosoling uh, liquid products for, for different markets. And uh, another example of expansion was uh, one of the largest plants we have is in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, which is in a paper coatings business. This is uh, a plant I built in Croatia about 10 years ago. That's their 10th anniversary now. And it's a similar, it's almost a sister plant that we have in Cambridge, Minnesota. And you see we employ young people and have fun doing it. And what's important about this plant, we were, when we, announced that we're going to expand into Europe, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, immediately happened, 
Switzerland and Sweden and France wanted to have us invest in their country. But I wanted to do something for my country where I came from. And it turns out that this particular plant is located in the area that was totally damaged in the war. So I know some of you have been seen this plant, but uh, it's one of those uh, plants that uh, it's, a, it's like a greenfield investment, like just to how we started here in White Bear Township. And uh, about five years ago, we bought a facility in, in uh, Montreal, Canada, and that's in the biotechnology business. A little different. And now the latest expansion has been in Sarasota area in Florida, which is called Bi Cortec Biotechnology Campus. Essentially, when we started, we are all chemical engineers and chemists. We started in our in a chemi uh, organic chemical synthesis business. That, that's what we do here. That's where we build our, uh, the plant in, in White Bear Township. But our second platform has been bio-based chemicals, which are derived from uh, 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 supply chain that Minnesota has, and that's, uh, you know, uh, uh, byproducts of food production. And the third technological platform is biotechnology, and that's what we're expanding now down in Florida and also in Canada. This is how it looks. The process is very complicated. It's essentially a fermentation process. And this, uh, uh, the, uh, the ma major market for this type of product is in bioremediation oil spills, you know, things that happen in the uh, uh, Gulf of Mexico when the, the platform went down. How do you uh, ecologically de uh, deal with these disasters without causing side effects and, uh, and to toxicity to animals? Expanding into Europe, this is one of the warehouses we have for our products in, uh, in the southern part of Croatia. Now on the, on the business side, so the, for those of you that are interested in some of the things we've done over the years, uh, we were one of the first uh, companies in the state of Minnesota, which was in the early days certified under ISO quality uh, manufacturing process standards. And we were also the first one in Minnesota that was uh, certified under ISO 14001 even ahead of 3M, so I'm kind of proud of that. <laughs> and this is environmental impact uh, certification. And we are the only uh, company or laboratory in the world that's uh, ISO certified for the uh, laboratory testing in, in our industry. Some of the things that uh, you, those are those nuts and bolts that I was talking about initially, how you build the business. What's, what's important? We have a distribution network that we build over the years now covers almost over 100 countries in the world. Uh, we think that we have a world-class research and development and the most diversified product offerings of any competitor anywhere in the world. And this is how that, that happened last year in White Bear Township. These are our salespeople. In this group, we had 90 countries represented, talking about global business. The, the vision and the mission. <coughs> the vision is the ability to see beyond the horizon. And the mission is our, our rule 202020, which means growing our business annually by 20%, which is, you know, because we're in the chemical industry, that's, that's sustainable. Uh, you know, some of the companies that, like Apple, Computer, and some of the others that are growing 1,000% a year. That's not possible in our industry. 20% new products or new technologies a year, and also uh, reducing costs annually by 20%. I mean, it looks challenging, but you know, you have to communicate these things to your employees and your, uh, and, you know, your partners to be able to accomplish that. Uh, the, the example I showed you of different plants that we, we are either building or acquisition-wise that's, uh, that's actually a te uh, the inter uh, vertical integration to reduce our, our overall cost. This is how it looks over when you extrapolate 20% growth a year. That's how it looks when you, on the diagram, when you show it over 20 years. Some years we did better than 20%, some years less than 20%, but overall we kept on growing because in our industry, if you are stagnant, if you're not growing, you're not going to be around for too long. <laughs> That's for sure. 
<coughs> uh, things that, that entrepreneurs need to know for the, for the global business, you need to make these regular field business, uh, visits. And also, I always try to teach my employees that you have to treat everyone equally, whether they are customer in Tokyo, Japan, or Des Moines, Iowa, they deserve to be treated equally. And we always did that, giving them uh, seminars and training sessions, uh, so, uh, technical and customer support globally. We have offices now all over the world with our own employees. They take care of their local market. And one thing that some of the American companies forget sometimes, not everyone speaks English. <laughs> it would be nice that everyone did speak English, but you have to treat them. With, with respect and uh, you know, and also offer all of your uh, brochures and websites in many different languages. And so that's a big job. And Anna here has been helping us a lot with with stand up. Anna, she is also the one that created this presentation to to get things, uh, you know, so that a guy in the middle of China can understand what you're trying to tell him in his own language. The, with this way, you're also showing respect for his culture. For, you know, that's how, how successful companies do there, that they, they transfer their message in, in a local way, in the local language. That's why we have our in-house advertising agencies. We have one here in, in Minnesota, and we have one in Europe. They cover all the world. Uh, one, one challenge that I had in the beginning, you know, I used different advertising agencies, but you know, by the time you teach uh, the local guy who, is, uh, who has your you account, you know, then another guy comes and it's always, you know, you can't get that message clearly across. That's why we made investment in our own uh, net marketing network worldwide, and it's doing very well for us. There is a, there's a study done by the, uh, by a, a research institute, actually they're connected with Harvard University, on the, called Markets and Markets Research, on uh, global corrosion inhibitor market, that's our core business. And when you look at, uh, in a period between 2010 and 2015, 23% of all the new products introduced in the world came from Cortec, from White Bear Township. And the companies that are in that business are, you know, from 3M, BSF, uh, you name it, Dow Chemical is second with, with 7%. So we always try to stay ahead of the competition in terms of new products, innovation, new ideas. And that's, that's how we managed to grow our business. Intellectual property, very important thing today. We got about now over 50 patents, uh, 60, 70 trademarks registered and, and growing. There's one, uh, one thing I mentioned before. You know, most of our competitors are using petroleum derived by chemicals or raw materials. About 20 years ago, a group of companies from Minnesota got together trying to figure out how can we build a supply chain of raw materials from byproducts of uh, uh, agricultural production to make useful chemicals that are actually, in many cases, better than petroleum derived. So here, we see some of the sources that we use. Corn is our biggest one with sugar beets, all kinds of soybeans, uh, all kinds of raw materials that are now derived from food production rather than from petroleum. This way we don't, we don't get uh, <coughs> dependent upon the cycle of cost of oil, uh, crude oil or natural gas. That's what happens. We were, Ines and I were in, in Galapagos and we saw a lot of plastic on the beaches. This on the, on the right hand side, this is a beach near, near Dubrovnik, which is just flooded with, with waste coming from Mediterranean. And these are some of the very most, most beautiful beaches for tourism, but that's the contamination that happens with plastics. So uh, four years ago, we were invited to participate in a European Union funded project called Marine Clean as a leading company in the, in the consortium that the uh, European Union funded to see how we can uh, help prevent the, the further <coughs> contamination of, uh, with plastics. And that was primarily meant for their, uh, for their 
cruise ships, uh, hundreds of cruise ships in the Mediterranean who, that are really contaminating this closed body of water. And as a result, we developed a, a, a special kind of plastic material, which is called eco-ocean, that's derived from, uh, from corn, byproduct of corn production. It uh, 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 goes through fermentation process, then goes through compounding, which is done in our plant, in both plants in uh, Minnesota and, and Croatia, and it goes into in a plastic material uh, for, for packaging. It's a, it's a USDA, USDA certified bio-based product with 77% of sustainable uh, renewable chemical content. That was a, the, my career was at the, at the point where I received a, a very special award as a corrosion engineer. I was probably the first one that, was, that received this award without having a PhD, but I never had time to finish it. And here comes the second part of my story. That's what motivated me to go to politics. If that was the war in Croatia, my homeland, in 1991. It was totally devastating, especially the area where our factory is now. That's how it looked during the war. And, uh, you know, this is, people had to, they were given one hour notice to leave their homes and only one plastic bag to take everything that they could with them and to leave everything behind. Uh, Dave, you, you in that part, you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, as a businessman, you can influence certain things. You can pay taxes, you can employ people, but you, you, you really don't have much of an opportunity to, to influence the society as a whole. And that's what motivated me to go into politics to see how I can help my country, maybe in a different way with new ideas. So I ran for political office as an independent and made it to the lower house of the parliament, the city council of Zagreb, where I was able to speak up for the benefit of my my citizens, people that voted for me. And also, I also served as a, a ambassador of Croatia to the United States for many years and started this thing that was called Partnership for Peace with Minnesota National Guard. It was, there was also Governor Palenti here in this picture. And we were able to form a real partnership between Minnesota National Guard and Croatian Army which eventually led us into NATO. Without Minnesota National Guard, it would have never been NATO. It's now you can see how Croatia is important on a global scale because it's in, a, in the heart of the Balkans, and that's like a powder keg. You know, it's, it can explode any time. But now we have Minnesota National Guard soldiers there and, and families. And uh, one of the things that I thought was really useful for both Minnesota and Croatia and then I ran for president of Croatia. Now this is a presidential time, so everyone is excited what's going to happen next month. And my, my theme was, uh, my, this was one of my billboards, was a uh, uh, good and honest guy for better Croatia. That was my, my story. And then we also said we are not taking away from people, we're actually investing. People got it. I mean, uh, you know, it's amazed. We're running as independent, I financed my own campaign out of my own pocket. I didn't want to take any contributions because I wanted to relate what I thought would be best for my country. And the sky is the limit for new people, for young people. Remember what John, John F. Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. That was one of the great thoughts that will never be forgotten. And I was accepted as a presidential candidate, and uh, that was the night of the elections. At when the election was completed, uh, and uh, people, uh, the the election polls were closed, I was at 25 percent of popular vote, and that was my opponent, the incumbent president. He was a he was a spy, just like Putin, a communist spy. But he won. At the end of the day, from 25%, when the final results were announced, I was down to 18, which didn't make me good enough for the second round. And that was the end of my political career. But you know, what happened also is that a lot of people were really upset 
with these results, and they, I call it election engineering. I'm sure they had a lot of advisors from Florida, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, what what it was what had happened the next day? People went to the streets all over Croatia trying to figure out, you know, because they were so disappointed. And at one point, I I saw it going too far, and then I went to national television and said, "Stop it." I accept the results the way they are, and the life goes on. And the life goes on. <coughs> people, really, uh, people rarely succeed unless they have fun in life, in what they're doing. And that's, that's where we are today. That's why I don't wear suits anymore because I've done it for 42 years. <laughs> now I wear jeans <laughs> and ties, you know. And uh, this is, this is how Ines and I got married. That was the that was most fun I had in my life, and we we actually had our own dinner. So it was the cheapest <laughs> <laughs> the cheapest one, but it was the most fun. Uh, this is uh, I started collecting old cars, and one of them were we showed many years ago. Remember Bill at the uh, uh, the parade here? That that was the same one here, the old Rolls 59. And actually, that's where we signed this in front of North Oaks Club. That's where we signed the, the NATO partnership between, <coughs> between uh, Minnesota National Guard and the uh, Croatian, uh, Croatian Army. And we love to fish. This is uh, this was taken in Hawaii, a big old marlin. And we had a lot of fun catching her, too. Another car we, I found in a garage in, uh, in the middle of, in, in a small town in Croatia, and we re restored it an old Maxton 73 Mark I. And that's my office officially when I'm at home. That's our home and that's our, I also work from there. Skiing is one of my hobbies. I, I love to ski. This, uh, I was skiing with Billy the Kid, the legend of, of skiing, and had a lot of fun and we became good friends. And tennis, of course, is another sport. So those are the, the fun things in life we do. And that's our home. We just came back from, from the Alps Ines, my wife, is from there. So that's, uh, that's our story. And we, you see, we love rest. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, Le Mans, 20, 24 hours of Le Mans. We showed them what Minnesotans can do when you have 635 horsepower. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and the, for the final thought to share with you today, success is a journey not a destination. Thank you very much. <laughs>